Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest from the other side of the world coming to us live from tomorrow. The one, the only David Dubine, oilseedcrops.org. You know him as Adapt2030, and I know him as my buddy from the, uh, my brother from another mother from the other side of the world. Now, we were just talking about uh, growing some moringa trees. And all of you out there listening should be growing food or supplementing your your food with healthy uh, green choices like microgreens or moringa. But we were just talking about all those buildings behind Mr. Dubine and what the heck he's doing there. So first of all, uh, David, how are you? How have things been? And why do you live there? Well, I used to work in China and Myanmar and living in Asia, working out here. This is uh, was quite the good spot to live. This is the balcony I have. This is my view off the balcony. The sun sets out that direction west over there. And, uh, you know, when we first started talking today, I'll just do a quick tour here. You know, it's the day after Thanksgiving, and uh, we need to replant a few things because these Moringa trees here have gotten a little bit too uh, squirrely. So let me come over here. Like when we planted the seeds in these moringa, you can see all these, they're, they're too pl closely planted together. We want to, uh, uh, there we go. We put them in these pots, but we want to come out and take them out today, put them outside uh, and, and split them into a couple different pots. And we're going to read. Yeah, we're going to rig these up inside, like all these smaller ones right here. We've chosen and set them aside to uh, to bring inside. And this one as well, I'm going to bring this one inside today, if you can see it shaking there. And uh, we'll leave a couple more out. And this, this smaller one also is coming in because, you know, some of the lettuces we're growing out here today, too. The, the temperatures are starting to dip off a little bit. It's better for our lettuce than it was before. So we got these trays right here growing. And uh, we got the gynura here. I need to split this gynura out. It's getting too bushy on the machine here. What we're trying to do today is also uh, put it into something like this, where we can, you know, put it in these individual pots. Like I'll cut this one back and then replant it. But to take some of these that we're going to re replant out and then start transplanting other plants in here. And then, uh, you know, the okra's finally starting to come in a little bit here. So we got some small okras. We got a couple things of okra here. But that's kind of my day planned is to re transplant a few things, have a little bit of wine because it is uh, Thanksgiving and it's starting to get cooler here as well. So that's kind of my day is just replanting the stuff out on the balcony. And uh, yeah, welcome to the city. Uh, got to get out of the cities. So, you know, we talk about it too, but I'm just saying, hey, you can grow stuff here, but, you know, it's not sustainable to keep yourself alive forever here. So, time to get out of the city for sure. Definitely time to move right now. So, I'm trying to plan to get all these plants away, make some plans to uh, get rid of the apartment and then, you know, move elsewhere because this city for any of us is not going to be safe. So, if I'm telling you I'm going to give up pretty much everything I have over in Asia and uh, get to a safer space, well, maybe you should be thinking about the same thing because these changes are happening way faster than anticipated. And all these supposed experts that are telling us that solar cycle 25 is going to be equivalent to solar cycle 24. I don't get it because it's more like they're trying to on this narrative of stability, like everything's going to remain the same. Oh, it's all going to be the same. Keep paying your tax. Keep going to work. Oh, it's totally fine. We're the weird ones talking about big changes, but why is the weather changing so fast? Why is the climate falling out so fast? Why are there so many crop losses everywhere so fast, far above anything else ever anticipated, and then uh, that we're supposed to believe it's going to be normal? My call is 50 sunspots or less for solar cycle 25. 50. Well, and I got some David, method to the madness adding in the way governments are prepared. David, let me Yeah, let me go ahead, Diamond. In. Let me jump in. Uh, last solar cycle, jump. last solar cycle, 98% of all solar physicists and 98% of all predictions were incorrect. Experts. So why would we believe anybody I know, I know. now? 
Yeah, John Casey was uh, one of the only correct predictors of that. It's so, and he was saying 75 sunspots. Actually, it was around 79. So John's calling about 50 this time again. So I'm going to stay with his predictions. And all the other uh, agency forecasters and people paid to put out the narrative to keep stability and uh, those placed in the media to direct narratives, I'm staying with 50 sunspots. And again, I want to put out my own forecast as to why, how governments are behaving and preparing. And everybody's got this timeline across the United States, Europe, uh, Australia to be everything prepared by 2023. So if everything's going to remain the same, why is there this massive rush timeline to get 5G rolled out, uh, EU Unified Defense Force rolled out, you know, highway systems rolled out for military movements all by 2023? If it's going to be a stable solar cycle, I highly doubt they'd be in that much of a hurry to get everything finished by 2023 on the timelines across multiple continents. You got to be kidding me. It's a narrative. Stability is a narrative just as much as global warming is now. Yeah, we've been prepping now for five years and we're still expanding food production. Our house isn't finished. So there's a lot of work to be done. It's not real easy to quickly jump over to a whole new paradigm. There is a learning curve. There is planting and there's failure to be done. And I love that you're planting so many diverse crops on your tiny little balcony there in the city because you're gaining the knowledge and the skills you'll need in better conditions to, to do even better quality work. Now tell me about the Moringa. Do you eat the leaves every day in the morning? Because we're going to be growing Moringa starting this winter into the spring, and we're also going to be growing some neem trees in our new uh, Zone 13 geothermal greenhouse. Have you have any? Have you eaten neem tree leaf? And are you familiar with it? No, but I, I know neem. I'm a little familiar with neem, uh, Southeast Asian plant. This moringa grows really well when it's warmer. Right now, it's at the borderline of it going into hibernation because it gets into the you know low 60s or, or high 50s in the evenings now with some mist and kind of uh, some fog. So these plants don't like it that cold. They go into hibernation phase. But in the summertime, we get leaf every single day and not a little bit like a multiple amount. You're snip, 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 snip. Every, every tree's got more branches and more leaves. Uh, you can eat it raw. It's pretty spicy. It's called la mu, like spicy uh, tree in Chinese. But uh, the leaves, you can stir fry them. They turn sweet after you cook them, but they're a little bit spicy like wasabi when they're raw. But anyway, it's what we're trying to do out here. And we got to separate all these today. I want to have uh, everything. We're going to our, our local. Ah, I wish we, I'd take you out there. We have this local garden as an old couple older people own this garden in the neighborhood. Uh, they must be like 80 years old community garden. So we're going to take these plants down there today and slam them in the ground and uh, see if we can get them to grow a little bit better here and get them a little bigger because they seem to be stymied by the uh, by the grow bags, man. The grow bags are great, but they're still not like nature where those roots can go as deep as they want, you know? Yeah, always put it in the ground. That's what I say. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, we, we really need to catch up. We haven't talked since LeetCon, basically. And we, we're preparing some big things this year, and we'd like to, you to be involved. Yeah, thank you. I'm really excited about LeetCon 2020. I heard we're going to do it in a different city. I think it's like Boulder or something, right? Not Denver this time. We're going to go to a different place to do it. So for me, that's a little more exciting because uh, Denver is great. Nice people, you know, lively city, et cetera. Really safe. Didn't feel anything there but uh you know to go to a bit smaller town up in the mountains i think would be a little more iry or something up there a little more fun we could do some day hikes and all kind of thing like this when we have free time maybe like a wild foraging walk out there see what we can find you know in the in the afternoons after the conference or whatever i always like that lead by example you and i are doing all the things we talk about we're sharing it with the public freely uh you know you let me come into your life today i'll let you call me up anytime that i'm available we're working together on this. We're only going to survive and thrive if we do this together. And I love the fact that you're going down to the community garden with the older generations and you're planting trees and you're working together. Um, are they aware of the changes coming and, and, and are there local people that are supporting you in your efforts? 
Yeah, the older people say it's really cold, and they notice it's much wetter this year, and that's directly from them. They remembered as kids something similar to this, so it's not like, wow, it's the first time it's ever happened. But they were saying when they were kids that they had something similar, how wet it was all the whole year like this. There's never been really a dry season. It's been rain, 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 consistently rain and misty and just like a little cooler than normal, but just the rain is. But they remember it. you got to go back 80 years, so they're talking about an 80-year rain cycle here, at least that they're talking about. And then you add cosmic rays to the mix in our waning magnetosphere, and this may continue. And based on our predictions, it will continue for the rest of our lifetimes and and not before the fact that the society that we live in, the model, the economic model, the infrastructure will slowly unravel. It's my prediction that in the next, in the coming years, as we enter cycle 25, we're going to start to see some effects to the grid with our waning magnetosphere. Just small solar flares or CMEs are going to have major effects, and people need to pre- be prepared for grid down scenarios, and they need to hedge their bets with dry goods and grow their own food, just like we've been uh, saying. Yeah, even if you have an extra five bucks here in the store, buy it. Use that five dollars extra to get anything you can. A couple tins of tuna, a couple tins of fish, whatever you can. A couple things of baking soda. If you got that extra money, you should be spending it on food and things that you might need. I mean, things are real cheap in the stores now, comparatively where most of us see it moving in the future. So, any extra money you have, you're walking out of it with your in your pocket when you're walking out of a supermarket. That's wasted money. You should be putting that into some sort of uh, Mm, you know, good that you can bring home with you and put away for a longer period of time because it's not going to take much longer before the world wakes up. We get the same planting conditions right now in 2019 and we have it again in 2020. They've got to be getting much carryover stock in this many countries working together to try to mask the losses. I mean, look what's happening in Brazil and Argentina. They're starting to show uh, a fair few things and societal unrest happening all over the place. I don't know how much you know, really longer we can continue to keep the supply chains intact for this as much social unrest across all these countries wanting governmental change and economic change. I mean, sheesh, how much more can the world take before something snaps out there? And when it does snap, you might not be prepared. Those things might disappear from your store shelves. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm trying to get ready. I'm not ready yet. I'm trying the best I can. But uh, if you ever think you're totally ready, it's like, you know, trying to well, you really want to start a project, you think you're going to get ready and you got to start. You just got to start because you're never going to be 100% ready. It's just going to have to learn on the job training, I guess, <laughs> OJT yeah. as we move through this because it's all going to be a new thing for all of us. When the event happens. You know, we've never experienced this before. There's no like real blueprint to move through it in modern age, you know? Yeah, when the event happens, we are going to be as ready as we are at that moment. So it, 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 I implore everyone listening to, to take uh, heed to what David said. And to take that extra money and maybe buy rice with it, buy some beans, buy some extra bullets, buy some Band-Aids. Do, and, and this holiday season, think preparedness. You could be buying these preparedness items for people that don't even know they may need them and you may save their life. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Check out David Debine's website, oilseedcrops.org. It links him to, links you to everything. He's a prolific podcaster. He's everywhere, like on Stitch and Apple and Twitter and Zitter and Shitter. Everywhere. He can fit her time to put it in. He's on social media everywhere. He's on bit shooting and YouTube and, and Steam it and DTube and God knows where else. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Have a great day at the community gardens. Say hi to your significant other and keep planting that moringa. You have any words of wisdom for our, our listeners? Just plant what you like to eat. You don't want to plant or grow something you're not going to eat and waste the time. And also do it now because, you know, we still make mistakes after almost a year using this vertical grow tube system. I'm still learning it's like I've been at this whole thing for a year. Which types of plants grow the best? You're going to continue a learning process, but you just got to start learning so you can make the mistakes or not. Learn from other people like Diamond. You know how to grow an enormous amount of stuff. I would come and live with you and learn how to grow and then you know, cut my learning curve by years because you've already done so many things. Like Learn from people that are better than you. I consider you a far better gardener and permaculture specialist than myself. I'm just learning as I go, but you I consider very much an expert on that.
Yeah, but the unique thing, the unique thing here, David, is that every single place that people live is unique. So everyone needs to start growing where they're at because I, I'm only an expert here in Southwest Colorado and you're becoming an expert on the balconies of Taiwan. So we all have skills that we can share to survive and thrive in the future. It's been a pleasure. Enjoy your day. And thanks for, thanks for coming, man. I appreciate it. Anytime, Diamond, anytime. We'll chat soon. And everybody else, good luck. See you next time. Bye. That's a boom.